Okay, welcome everyone to today's uh, Let's Talk Thought uh, meeting. Today is uh, January 20, 2022. And we have a few topics in the agenda. The first one is from Francesco and Harshad about Kevahet. Well, go ahead, all yours. So we were talking about uh, there was one user who prompted with an issue in Kebisha, uh, I think. Oh, sorry, in Elira, that should be the issue, second one. And then we were trying to debug it together. And we saw uh, because of the so base image had proper uh, packages, but Elira had a wrong package. Like one of the component had one, bar, one package, which was uh, on an older version. And that was causing the, this issue. Uh, then we were just thinking, but Kebishet update should have updated it because it's an overlay and now Kebishet can update them. Uh, but there is an issue with Elira repository and Kebishet is not updating in general. So yeah, we, me and Pep were looking at it, uh, still, still working progress and why it's not doing. So, but after that, we were just discussing, suppose uh, base image, uh, has some packages uh, which are known and it's base images mentioned in tot.yaml file then then will kevish it while updating uh query thamos and sorry tot and use this information that there is a base image and it should be considered uh so that was the question uh because uh, i think we missed that we don't know if kevish has that feature yet where it is providing or where it is providing the whole tot.yaml file to 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 uh dot so if it is then i'm pretty sure that it should consider the base image so just wanted to know about that if you remember kevin yeah the advice manager should pass the tot.yaml the pip file in the pip file that lock so if it does then uh these kinds of issue will uh, resolve in future by itself because the base image will have some some packages and Todd should consider both of them in resolving this stack. So maybe in future when Kebish should uh, update, instead of update the Kebish should advise is used, uh, it can better, it can resolve these things. So that was something which we found out and we thought it would be good to like uh, talk here because it's some, this is one of the examples which we can use. I guess that's why mm -hmm. we bought this topic here. Can we create a regression test or reproducer from one of the Elara tutorial commit IDs? It should be possible, right? Yes, pretty. Like we know which particular which uh, package was that. Uh, it was type ex typing extension. It was on a mm. older version, and that was the case. Uh, it's mentioned everything in that issue Elara. So we, can, if we want to, we can uh, try it out with that. Uh, so yeah, I think that's mostly it. Uh, like there's the the most discussion will happen if once we start testing with Kevishet do with help of Kevishet doing the thought advices on these mm -hmm. repository, and that's what that should be something which we check. That is what you stated in issue seven nine two. Uh, I think so. Uh, uh, no, seven nine two no. is the one which is uh, which is something me and Pep are working on. The there was some issue with Kevin should update, uh, but okay. I think Kevin has already fixed it, so we just need to test that. Got it. So for um, for eight four, is it is it? Um, yeah, we need to spec out the the user story here a little bit. Um, is it a regression test or an integration test or an, an, an like a reproducer we want to create so that we can test our development against that test? Like do proper test driven uh, development in this case. I would say it would be a test for dot uh, and like with help of Kabisha like that could be one of the tests like it wouldn't be a cabbage test because cabbage is is just doing the thought advice right it's providing thought advice so it would be one of our uh ex like the how we had the cli examples it could be one mm -hmm. of those examples via cabbage 
uh, I don't know if, if testing is the right word, but example might be. Yeah. And the, uh, I'm slow. And the example that, we want to show again, what, what is it? Uh, we have different package versions. And uh, based on the base image we recommend, we can solve that version clash. Well, the, so the problem was Elira required, uh, for example, version 4. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and that is the base image. On top of it, there is Elira tutorial where the stack had a typing extension with version less than four. And that broke the main thing because you are installing on top of it, right? So the, the, the application requires that, but that should not happen if, um, the, the problem is, might be that we don't put the base image in the .yaml file. So that is not yes. included in the recommendation. Uh, so, um, this example that we show off here that could happen because we are doing containerous Python application development and one of our dependencies is included in the base image, right? Um, if we are not doing containerous stuff, I'm pretty sure the resolution process of pipend will not result in that error. Is that also correct? So these installers like pipend, micro pipend, uh, if you if even if there is a base image, which suppose you are using a base image and there is a package already installed in it, and now you provided a new pip file log, right? And you say this is my pip file log and install this. It will start installing it, and if a package is even downgraded, it will downgrade it because it feels this is the right truth, right? This is what the user wants, uh, and that's why it will downgrade right. it. And downgrading okay. it is the problem. But I feel when Toth yeah. will when Toth will advise or Toth install, Tamos advise, install will do it, it will consider that there was a package which was 4.x and it will also check there is a base package which is Elira and it will resolve the stack and then install it, right? Yeah. And that is what I think uh, we want to project here. So uh, if you provide a base image and the base image is analyzed by Toth, uh, it should be it should be aware that uh, there are typing extensions in a certain version in the base container image, and these typing ex extensions in that specific version will be used. Uh, so it will uh, consider already installed type, typing extensions if they are in uh, S2I uh, environment, right? In uh, in the root of, of S2I. In that case, uh, the resolution process will, will consider these typing extensions. What is not clear to me uh, how that issue looks like, because uh, if you are saying that, um, so uh, there was resolved stack by, by pipenv, or who resolved that software stack, that uh, pip file log? Pipenv. Uh and then uh, you try to install uh, dependencies that are stated in pip file log uh, to the base container image, right? So in that case, uh, micro pipenv will overwrite version that is shipped in the container image. It will either upgrade it or downgrade it. I think you, you mentioned it. So what's not clear to me uh, how that issue basically was was created. Is it issue of uh, dependencies, like version range specification of, of these dependencies? In that case, uh, we can write uh, prescriptions for that. Or is it uh, some tooling issue, like a version that should not be resolved was, was resolved? So... so so my understanding is that we updated the base image, but the stack was never updated. So once the base image got the newer version, then the problem was introduced. But you don't see it until, until you run a specific piece of code of a layer, actually. So potentially everything works, but then when you start to run it, it didn't. And uh, what broke the, prob the image was the new base image that we used. 
uh, is the base image using the same Python interpreter version? Uh, then it might be issue of, of dependencies. Yes. So of course to check uh, why uh, that import is done and uh, if there is needed a prescription that uh, that import is not valid uh, with with new version. So uh, like in simpler terms, the base image was Alira, and Alira got updated, and it it had one dependency dependent package which was updated. So base image is up, up to date. Uh, now there is this application. Uh, we use this new base image to install this. Uh, but this application had the pick file lock in this was outdated. Uh, it did not have Alara in it. It was pandas or something else, which which was also dependent on the same uh, package, which is called type, typing extension. And that was 3.7. So it just applied on it. Uh, so when you do pip, uh, so when you do pip install or micro pip install with a pip file log, and if it finds typing extension, it says typing extension 4.x found, but you stated 3.7. So I'm installing this. So it uninstalls 4.x and installs 3.7, right? Even though there is a Alira in that a Python uh, side packages which actually requires 4.x, uh, so that's what is the problem. Uh, like, if now is it clear? Mm -hmm. so, so I don't think this is a prescription issue, right? Like this is more of a resolving stack, issue, right? Like how would prescription? Oh, I mean, we can state in prescription that when installing these things, you no know, check on these things, but uh, like as a user, you would have to just know these things, right? Um, so it, it depends uh, where the issue is. So um, Elira introduced Python, Python stack, right? Uh, it's yeah. installed in the in the base container image, and then uh, the tooling is trying to uh, install other version that is already present in the base image. Yes. Uh, now the question is if uh, the version that is present in the container image was declared as compatible, like Elira if Elira was declared to be compatible with uh, typing extension that is about to be installed, right? If yes, then it is a prescription. If if not, uh, then the failed part is that the resolution process uh, that was done for uh, that pip file log that was produced does not respect dependencies that are already present in the base container image because it was done by pipen a solution for that is to use base image and ask tot for an advice because we have already resolution process that takes into account base container image so elira that is uh, shipped and the, the wall stack and what are you trying to uh, add to that uh, so uh, so it means like that there are two the there are these two cases that are worth to investigate. Like what is uh, dependency on typing extension? What is the version range specification in the base container image in the application stack? And if it matches that four dot I don't know what you said or three seven or something like that, then uh, ask that for an advice. So I have a question in return. So for example, like, let's forget this. Let's uh, take this example. Uh, if I if I have one pipe file, which has Elira and Pandas, both of them requires some X, some version of typing extension because pa because Elira required a higher number. That's why pip and pip and will resolve it. It'll give you the highest, highest version, right? The 4.X version. Now this was first case. Now second case is we, we divide this pip file one pip file has Elira, one pip file has just pandas. This will have 4.x, but this will have the highest version which pandas required. So pandas if required just 3.7, it will just have 3.7, right? Now I install this Elira in a base image. So I have this 4.x. And I'm installed. Now I'm I'm putting now I'm using this base image to build this application. Uh, now because this pip file is the latest pip file, any resolver, my micro pip, anything, it will consider this as the 
truth, right? Because this is what user is providing. So it will definitely downgrade. My question is, this will happen with any other package. Like, how can we write this in a prescription? Because prescription, uh, until now, I understood is like uh, all the nuances of each and every package, right? Like, if there is a TensorFlow. It, in this version, you should not do this thing. But this seems to be a general case. So how, like how, I don't, I don't not understanding how we are putting prescription into this. Uh, the the case that you described is for for the resolver. It's not for uh, prescriptions. So prescriptions will not solve this. But it's yeah. a resolver that takes what is present in the base container image and what you are trying to install into that container image. It was uh, the example in build and extend containerized applications uh, article where you have a base with TensorFlow and you are trying to install TensorBoard. And the resolution process will pick the right TensorBoard based on what TensorFlow you have in the base image. Right. And this is the same case. So uh, like, like you said, we should write a prescription for this. Uh, I think that was an earlier iteration on the problem or on the solution. Um, as I understood it, feel you correct me if I'm wrong, prescriptions is not the, the um, solution here. It's just an advice that we need to generate. Advice based on the software stack provided by the user and the base image and the content of the base image, obviously. Yes, if the issue is in resolving, considering container yeah. image and what is done, then no, prescriptions are not the solution for that. If the issue is that uh, typing extensions or requirement on typing extensions has too broad version range specification, so it allows uh, also downgrading to older version, but that does not work with Elira, then a prescription for that. But the, the resolution process for, for base and uh, the application still applies. Yeah. For me, this translates to um, if I'm a very experienced developer and I, I've done all the pip env install, blah, 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 and I have fallen like 15 times. And now I know that I need a minimum version of a typing extension or whatever it is. Then I'm going to write down a prescription about that. If I'm using these and their packages, minimum version, blah, 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 because some other lazy developer on this planet did not do a good version range specification in his um, requirements TXT or his uh, module, I need to fix it via a prescription. But that is not the case as I understood it. Let's do that. It, it, it feels to me like a good uh, A, a regression test. Um, and B, like a good exploration on the build process, because uh, what we're really experiencing here is that we are keeping two, that we are keeping one software stack up to date in two different places, right? We're going to update the Elira image, uh, sorry, the base image somehow, and we're going to update the software stack inside or on top of that image up to date. Is that, is that correct? That's what happened? I kind of lost you on the question. I uh, can talk louder or faster. Uh, so <laughs> I, I wonder what the, the root cause here is, right? Uh, we, we have uh, diverging uh, versions, version requirements, right? Uh, how could that be? Um, somehow we ended up in the base image with a newer version than that we wanted to install, whatever the scenario is. Is that happening because we are maintaining the base image independently of the software stack? So yeah. if if it's like that, I think what we really should explore is how to manage these software stacks in a more homogeneous way. So, so why is it happening that we are diverging somehow? And that's okay. the reason we brought up this topic because we yes. thought if Cambridge is updating all of these packages, so the Elira would have been also updated by Cambridge. It means Todd yes. knows about it, and this Elira DevOps DevSecOps repository also managed by Cambridge. It also knows about this. So when it is updating these packages, it will know the base image came from the previous one, which I, which I know about. So it will take care of this. So, yes. from my point of view, um, somebody what? should. Uh, what? What happens if the uh, the base image is not analyzed? 
Wait, wait, wait. Uh, that, that's a, a question we can easily uh, uh, push back. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, um, so from my point of view, we should sit down and really write up that that user story, right? Um, this is a scenario we found. Here's an example, git commit of Elira um, tutorial. And uh, here's a problem um, statement. This is how we're going to solve it. H how can we do software um, dependency management in a more integrated way if we if we are seeing these scenarios, like base image, software stack on top of that. Um, how can uh, Kebeshed or Tamos uh, help in that scenario? And uh, I think uh, part of that write-up is exactly the question you just had, Francesco, because it, obviously it's a valid question, so we should answer it somewhere. How? Who's going to write that up? Who's in a writing mood this month? So I think the technical solution is pretty pre pretty straightforward, right? Uh, we need Kebeshet and Tamos to advise a software stack based on the container image. The container, uh, the base image, obviously needs to be uh, analyzed by us. So all the data should be um, up to date and capable to answer the question or to give that advice. Seems to be straightforward. It might take a little bit of time because I don't know if all the images are known, if all the images are analyzed, and blah 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 blah. So it might circle back to a seeding question um but more important it feels like somebody needs to write that up and guide that guide that solution guide that thing uh, so we can uh i can write the issue the complete thing like with each bit so like we i can find out like which was contributing to what package and then we can decide on writing the resolution uh, and yeah. if you if you say we publish, we publish. Yes, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do that. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for the comments. All right. I clicked the wrong key, and the window is gone. Uh, one second. Mm. While I recover um, the next. Uh, item in the agenda is from Gage. So if you yeah. want to start, I'll, I'll share in a bit. So I noticed there was a lot more, I guess, data coming in from advised reports that are specific to packages. Like, I know there's a lot of like GitHub data. So like in, in examples, like how many stars it has or um, if it's actively maintained and a lot of different package specific statistics on um, Python packages, but those are only accessible through doing an advised report. So, and they're not, most of them are not dependent on the report, meaning like they don't, they're not tied to the report in any way, they're tied to the package. So from a, I guess, user API would be a good place to be able to get this data. So I guess querying, say, hey, what does Doff know about this one package version index environment? And it's it, right now it gives us metadata, but also if it could also give all that prescriptions and justifications, maybe not justifications, but like the data that's relevant for the package, but not necessarily the advice report because that would be interesting to view on a UI perspective. Is your question, uh, hey, give me everything you know about a package version? That is what you're asking for, right? Yeah, it's like, is that something that's possible to implement um, with how things are stored currently? I don't know if it's the easiest to just, is it, is it just making a new endpoint or is it moving stuff around where it's stored at the moment? What about starting with uh, metadata, like having one view for each package version, you know? So uh, if you have a report uh, from the resolution process, you can click on a package and that uh, view would give you, um, give you uh, metadata, package metadata as, as a starting point. Right. But you can mm -hmm. my I, I 
I think I'm a little bit confused. Like I, I'm, I'm talking about like the reverse. So I don't have an advised report. I just have the package input and I want to get some of what the advised report might give me without actually running one. I'm, uh, I, I think as we, as we talked about it, uh, someone uh, this week um, on one-on-one, it felt to me like we, we, we maybe need something that is giving information about a package package version uh, a that could be metadata we receive from pypi like whatever maintainers or something like that uh, number of downloads that is one class of metadata other class of metadata is from github like that many stars or that many maintainers on github Mm-hmm. Um, but the more interesting metadata is uh, that we might uh, generate. Like uh, we have seen this package version in four different runtime environments, or we have seen this package version just in combination with Python 3.7 or something like that. Um, that is what you're looking for, right? Um, information that could be derived from an advice because the advice document is basically containing everything that we analyzed about the software stack. Mm -hmm. But um, you're looking for the package and all the information we have derived about that package out of all the advices we have uh, seen before. So uh, yeah, it's kind of in reverse somehow because we are not going from advice to package, but from package to information out of advices. And for me, it feels like a job for maybe a new um, uh, investigator, right? So if I see there's a new advice, maybe I can chunk down that advice document and generate these metadata or add to metadata existing for each and every package. That, we uh, have, yeah. We have this logic in prescriptions refresh job. And what it does is basically goes through advice documents uh, from time to time that are on Ceph and generates this type of data. Like uh, this package is uh, commonly used on Fedora 34 running Python 3.9. As of now, the this prescription refresh job is turned off because of uh, possible misleading results, you know, because we would like to aggregate more, more uh, requests from, from users. Uh, eventually, we could generate these type of reports also to, and have them also on API endpoints. Um, like uh, the the feature is completely valid and and makes makes sense. Uh, what about having that that metadata first, you know, and uh, see? Okay, this is what we have about the package from from static metadata that we extract. Mm-hmm. And as the system will be used more, uh, we can expose also data like usage of, of uh, packages that we we know. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it is um, um, it is two threads, right? Uh, one is explore how to use and and integrate into the front end the meta information we have right now. I don't know if GitHub stars is a is a good thing or number of versions per per package is a good thing. Whatever is available right now, right? And really, just to explore the infrastructure part. How do I access that information? How do I provide it via user API? How do I integrate it? How do I visualize all that stuff? And maybe the second thread is uh, think about what information might be interesting, right? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I can envision many things like, 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 like a histogram of a, a package version versus runtime version. Like uh, newer versions have been seen just on rel five. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, rel eight five. I don't know if you go that deep. Um, rel five would be fancy too, by the way. Um, older packet or. or even the new package versions have just been seen on um, 8.4. That should that that could indicate something. I don't know if it is way too complicated to aggregate that information, to visualize that information, and if you really can conclude something from it. Because just having fancy graphs on the web front end is not good enough. We need to provide some conclusion. Um, so that might be the second thread. 
really think about which meta information might be interesting to developers, architects, whoever it is, to consumers. Does that does right. it make sense to really go in, yeah. into both directions? It's important to actually, I guess, be specific on what we want to show because just aggregating the data, because the PyPy uh, downloads database, it's enormous and mm. aggregating it is, I've tried before and it, you run out of your free tier pretty quickly on just trying to get all the data you want. So you really need to be specific in what you want. Mm. So yeah, there's a lot of thinking that needs to be done with that if we want to store that data. Yeah. And uh, actually, we should um, synchronize with um, Dominic um, because he's also aggregating data. I don't know in which way we, we use that, if we can reuse uh, that infrastructure that he created, but it feels like um, it's some kind of combination of uh, infrastructure and research, what we really want to do. It might be a new investigator um, that we continuously trigger to aggregate more information. It might be a meta information job that we're going to run uh, periodically. Okay. You said that up somehow, um, uh, Gage, Think, thinking about what information might be useful. No, let's turn it around. Everybody let Gage know in the show notes what might be interesting. I put one, two, three, four. For the Instagram idea was something I looked at a lot. I, I use some of the other um, web apps around. I think there's Snake, something like that. Oh yeah, had some cool histograms on get up popularity and over time with versions, and you could do a lot of stuff. It's just yeah. storing and aggregating is the issue. Yeah. So, so um, everybody have a look uh, in in your brain. Uh, pick from your experience what might be interesting to you as a Python dev, what what kind of meta information might be interesting? Cool. Hey, um, yeah, I mean, there is, uh, I believe there is quite quite a lot of info, uh, metadata already. You mentioned the prescription reference job, but uh, like the prescriptions, they collect like the all the OSS uh, scorecards and all that stuff. It's already, but it's not in the database, right? Uh, it's not in the database. It's in the prescriptions repository. But that could be like already have a list of potential metadata to add to the database, maybe. But I don't know. If if we want to have uh, this uh, information on on the database, um, like I'm saying the database because it, the goal here at the end is to be able to query it from the API. So I don't know if prescriptions is uh, the most interesting source for meta information. Um, I, it's just a feeling like if we can get more statistical statistical more data based on statistics it might be more interesting because um prescriptions feel like uh, pretty static but also a thing that we should display something like uh, we have 15 prescriptions um based on that package like, like like the prescription itself i don't know if if that is a good piece of information statistics about prescriptions yeah maybe because it shows our value Oh, uh, am I am I wrong in that? In that I aspect? think the scorecard data is important to show. It gives a lot of security information about the package and package mm -hmm. version specifically. So that and I know that's in the prescriptions. I'm pretty sure. So at least that would be interesting to show. All right. So, yes. Uh, it might be interesting to keep this information in the resolution in the resolution process. So in this case, people really ask for recommendations and we show them uh, these metadata about packages that we have. And in that case, the system uh, would be used, you know, it's not uh, like static, uh, static content that you can explore, but you have an application, reach out to Todd and Todd will give you guidance on that. Okay. So in the use case, if someone just wants to explore one package, you would suggest saying, okay, 
let's build an application on just this package and see what's um, recommended. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, so the system is really uh, queried and, and used. Uh, I don't know if if uh, some types of information that we would like to keep in prescriptions are are that would say valuable. Like definitely, if we show more data about uh, the package, the more the data we show, uh, eventually uh, better. You know. What we can do over time, we can uh, uh, provide an endpoint that will give uh, back prescriptions when you when you query. You know, so the prescriptions could be added into user API and uh, show endpoint that uh, really like these are the prescriptions. But maybe uh, like that's like long term idea. Uh, it's it's valid. Um, but maybe, you know, to, to have chicken steps, maybe it can be good to show uh, what we have about packages, what we have about containers, and maybe these, these views will show uh, what are the next steps for us. It could be eventually important for, for users. Uh -huh. Cool, lots of ideas. Uh, how, I mean, I guess some of those should be also moved into issues. So any volunteers to write this down? Obviously not. Um, let, let, let's um, let's figure it out. Uh, maybe the the first thread that I mentioned. Um, let's have a look at the infrastructure, how to display stuff that we have right now. Um, maybe let's let's target that first, while we not stop thinking about the second thread. And uh, maybe let's let's have a demo on something in in a week or two or three weeks. Gage, maybe you can do that so that we all understand yeah. what what is it that we are talking about. Because I just added the idea of having a Visual Studio Code extension to do the same thing. In the end, it boils down to a an user API endpoint. Yes, um, but but if I'm thinking about package, how does it feel um, on the website? What what information can we provide? Maybe that is really a good thing to get us um, started. Nevertheless, yeah, um, please create a tiny issue for that. Yeah, I can agree with the ideas and put them yeah. together. Thank you. Cool. Christoph, the next topic about security issues, is it a bug or a feature? I don't know. Um, I think it's broken. That, that's easy to Oops. solve. Um, I'm going to postpone that one for next week because it feels like a little bit of time that we need to do i'm gonna pull up the other one i think uh, hashart or whoever did that uh, answered my question um hashart you you added uh, tecton chains to all that stuff i asked for a demo i think you recorded one yeah we uh, actually demoed it a while ago like we started we started in october with tecton yes. chains we demoed like the whole thing, but uh, like there's a Q, uh, Q part missing, which we had stated like what's going on, and it's still there. Yeah. Uh, there is, uh, it is said that it might happen in uh, in end of January. So let's see. Uh, and uh, I just uh, wrote that there because I thought the meteor thing is something which is going to be presented in large, but it is also included. Like everything is set there. But um, that's good. I, I was not aware about a, a specific recording that we have done already. I knew that the for the Octo Summit demo, um, the demos were required. Didn't know that we recorded that stuff. Um, that's good. So um, I'm done for today. Um, the security stuff I'm gonna postpone to next week. Uh, the demo is answered. So back to you, Pep. Okay, um, actually, 
The next topic uh, I, I, I edited and I might also postpone it because it might, so in theory the meeting finishes in 20 seconds <laughs> and, and this might be a bit long as well. But I'll just mention what, what is it about and, 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 and you guys tell me. It's again uh, going back to six reviews and, and the areas. And the trigger for the, talking about this again here was this uh, innocent PR to clean up um, unused uh, labels related to SIGs. And it actually turns out that uh, we, we discussed this in another tech talk a few weeks ago, actually, uh, that so, some of those would should not be deleted, <coughs> which I already removed some, some from the PR. Um, to not remove them. But then <coughs> I was thinking or noticing, let's say, that maybe the, the six that we have, the, the, the list here is the five, six that are currently documented. Um, they are probably not enough. And if we remove the the ones that we have, or we are leaving a few, um, quite a few gaps. And when I say they are not enough, I mean everything, every piece of code is supposed to be owned by a SIG or another one, right? And um, the, the current five SIGs certainly don't cover everything. I'll give a specific example. The, the, the goal to improve the integration tests, um, those integration tests, I was thinking, hey, which SIGs do they belong? And there, there is no SIG. So in terms of organizing a meeting, you know, to 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 review them, the obvious should be simple. Let's have the SIG review that, but there is no SIG. Uh -huh. So the topic here is about like more reviewing the the whole situation with SIGs. Um, yes. Yes. S sounds to me like a topic for next week. Yeah, You're exactly. absolutely right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, just. Just a short comment on that one. Um, we 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 should organize ourselves a little bit better. We should watch out for the overlap with operate first. We should watch out for the overlap with um, the open services group. So it should be a disjoint um, set of six uh, that we have. If we can create something in cooperation with um, operate first, that's that's great. Um, having said that. There's always a, uh, exceptions to the rule. I think uh, Hashad, I, I act your or approved your DevSecOps uh, ZIG for Toth, which is specifically for Toth, which is also present in the Open Services Group. There's also a DevSecOps Group, which makes, at least to me, perfect sense uh, because we have all the Toth-related aspects. Um, for example, the um, Elira. Um, dependency update stuff that we just talked about is, from my point of view, and, and pretty much a DevSecOps related topic that we should cover somehow. Um, so we have the Toth related uh, aspects of DevSecOps, and we have the Open Services Group related things, or the Operate First related uh, things. Anyway, uh, clean up and being a little bit more active and verbose with uh, six and working groups is something we need to have a look at that this quarter. Yeah, let's talk next week about this. Yeah. And another example was just the previous topics discussion about you know how you know what brainstorming about this type of inf this type of information you should have a SIG, and I'm not sure which of the current six actually would cover the discussion in the previous topic. Um, um, for me, it's um, user experience. Me it's a matter, maybe? yeah. I don't but know. It's, then it's it a matter of knowledge graph, but then it yeah. touches. Yeah. You know. Maybe it's a matter of um, maybe it's a matter of stack guidance, right? Um, because um, if we're doing stack guidance, what what we're supposed to do if we are providing the guidance service, um. We, we we just talked about uh, how can a human being better understand what our guidance is. Uh, that is what we are talking about. Machines are pretty capable of understanding the 200 or 500K of JSON we're going to send them. But for a human being, parsing that stuff out is kind of hard. 
reading a prescription is also easy, but really understanding it in the context of your own software stack might be a hard job. So for me, this is all like stack guidance, once human readable, understandable, once machine readable and executable. But um, it might also be a matter of user experience. I guess that's how we want to drive it. So let's let's discuss that. Yeah, and yeah, uh, one thing to uh, and I, I'll shut up quickly. But one thing that at least I believe has helped me uh, to try to make an idea of this is um, this concept of every piece of code should belong to a SIG. So if you think in terms of repos, like uh, where and as a building block for for SIGs that can help uh, identify concrete SIGs. Uh, on the other hand, and th there are several existing SIG labels that correspond one-to-one -to, -one to a repo, which mm. in theory, it's, 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 I mean, it's possible. It's not against the rules, but there are like over a hundred repos and uh, we cannot have over a hundred SIGs. So oh. okay. it's just also, we, yeah, we should. Yeah, we should not. No. no. Let's uh, take that uh, to the next week. It feels like we need more than seven minutes to talk about that and think about that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No response. Any anything else? DevConf coming up. Yeah. Everybody have a look at the agenda. Um, send out recommendations in the uh, open services group chat. I think we are pretty well aware about uh, DevConf, but if you have something to point out, send it to the people. Um, yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for taking notes, everybody. Thanks for hosting and facilitating. Pep, see you. Okay. Thanks. Bye.